G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick tutorial based on a question someone asked me recently, which is it possible to open Revit and a work sharing monitor at the same time? Well, it is. Um, the solution isn't really a Revit solution, it's more so an IT solution. So today I'm gonna to show you a simple batch scripted approach, which will allow you to create an icon or shortcut um, that you can get your users to click to target uh, more than one executable at the same time. Anyway, let's get started. So on my desktop, um, I have two icons in the middle. One is Revit 2020 and one is Revit 2020 Special. This one here is just gonna open Revit 2020. It's nothing special, it's a shortcut targeting a particular location. Um, we can see in this case, it's targeting a program on my C drive and also deploying it in the English language. Um, in this case, we can also just go and see, I guess where this file is actually coming from. If I just make a file explorer, paste this in my bar and I can see that somewhere in here, there'll be a revit.exe, an executable. Um, that is really what this um, what this program is targeting, I believe. So somewhere in here, I don't think it's Revit Worker that it's targeting. Um, I thought it's actually there's actually an EXE called Revit. There we go. So this is typically how a program would launch. Um, now we're going to build a special tool that does this. So instead, if I click on this shortcut, um, it looks normal at the moment. It's booting up Revit like it usually would. Um, but what it's also going to do is it's going to open the work sharing monitor. Now, I totally appreciate that not um, a lot of firms are still using the work sharing monitor, but this question did come specifically on the back of this. However, you could target other programs to open together at the same time. So how have I done this? Well, in this case, I've used what's called a batch script uh, to run a few tasks concurrently. So I'm gonna close these two programs once they boot up, um, but it looks the same to the user because it's a shortcut. Um, but what this thing actually is, is a little uh, BAT file that is targeting a few things. So really what it's doing is running a batch script. I've changed its icon so it looks the same as opening up Revit, um, but I'm gonna show you how you can build this little tool in this case. So I'm gonna make a new notepad file. And in this case, we're really just gonna be running a few things here. So like a lot of batch scripts, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just say echo off. Um, I believe this is mostly here to stop the, um, the program just recursively running upon itself. Um, and looping out the computer essentially, that, that's my understanding. Um, I don't know a great deal about batch scripts, I just know how to find solutions um, that you know other people have implemented when it comes to batch scripts and sort of modify some of the code. But this is a very straightforward one. So we're actually gonna be starting uh, an EXE in this case. So I'm gonna say start, and we're gonna be targeting the application. So we know that the application we're looking for is called revit.exe. You don't have to include the executable name. Um, and from here, we're actually gonna be targeting the same command that the standard shortcut would be targeting. So if you need to find out where your Revit is actually being stored, um, one way is just to search for it in Windows, right click on it, and in this case, um, open file location. Now it's usually gonna take you to a shortcut um, if you have one. Now you can just go at that point to properties and you've got that, that target available. You can also right click again and go to open file location and it's gonna take you to where that actual element is located. At that point, you have the path available that you're targeting. So we can then space apostrophe, uh, paste in the full, the full path, including revit.exe. And then we're gonna add at the end our, our language uh, option as well. But you can similarly just go to the actual shortcut and just pretty much copy and paste that target as well for the same outcome. We're also gonna target the work sharing monitor as well. So we'll say start WSM work sharing monitor, just a name for the process. And likewise, we're gonna be targeting the work sharing monitor as well. So I'm gonna target the 2020 work sharing monitor, open the location, which should take me to a shortcut. And at that point, we also have um, our target uh, command as well. So we can use this. So at this point, that's pretty much it. That, that is literally the batch script. Um, what I'm gonna do is save it. And I'll save it just to desktop. And I'm just gonna call this um, testing.bat. So you do wanna include the, the extension and also just set it to all files, which will give you the option to save this, this text file as any other um, file type, in this case, a batch script file. I'm gonna save it. And we should now have a little testing batch script available. So if I just close these properties and I run testing.bat, it's gonna target those executables. It's gonna open up Revit 2020 and it's also gonna open the work sharing monitor. 
Now, you don't just have to target these particular programs. Um, if you're constantly targeting multiple programs at the same time, um, this might be a option for you as well. Or maybe it's just a step into the world of batch scripting. Um, these can be really useful uh, to build little macros or tools uh, that you can run on your computer. Um, it, it, they are dangerous if you get them wrong. So you do wanna make sure that you either test them on virtual machines or that you test them carefully. You understand how the script works before you execute it. Um, always be wary when you find batch scripts on the internet uh, to read what the batch script is actually doing just to make sure it's not a malicious attempt to do something to your computer. Some people do um, like to troll people with batch scripts um, and sometimes give them bad batch scripts as advice. Uh, but for the most part, if you find these things on places like Revit forums, typically they're gonna be quite reliable. Um, in this case, you can also change the icon if you want. Um, so I think it's under, um, no, not advanced details. Interesting, where's the option to change the icon? Strange, I can see it here. I think if I change, change its name to testing and omit the extension, what happens then? No, so in this case there's, ah, oh, I've made a shortcut to the batch script. That makes sense. So what I've done is created the shortcut to the batch script, which is safe somewhere else on my machine. Um, that, that makes more sense. So in this case, then I've changed the icon of the shortcut. <laughs> That's right. So um, in this case, you can pick another icon. Let's just say the chip. And then you run it and it targets this. Now you can also, um, I'll, just, I'll just check where I'm actually targeting. In this case, I think I'm actually targeting a location. You could target a place on a server, for example. Um, that's one method as well, if you wish to have a custom icon. But really it's gonna run, target the actual batch script and off it goes. One good thing about that is I guess if you want to manage that batch script in one central location, um, it's much more effective because you know you can have one IT manager uh, working from a, read, a write perspective, whereas everyone else maybe just has read privileges, which is a little bit safer to make sure that people don't go and muck around with the um, the batch script itself. Um, so hopefully that's a useful technique um, that might help your users um, in, in being forced to open the work sharing monitor whilst they work. So hopefully this is a simple implementation strategy that might help BIM managers, IT managers out there. I'm sure most IT managers knew how to do that already, um, hopefully. <laughs> but otherwise, it's just a simple little trick. Um, and just remember to be careful with batch scripts. Um, with great power comes great responsibility and all that. Um, but anyway, it might be useful for some of you out there. So if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.